So, if you've played From the Dust before, you've probably become curious about like helicopters and things like that. And if you've really played From the Depths and you've made a helicopter, maybe you've thought about making like a tilt rotor or a VTOL or a quadcopter. Today, I want to run through several ways you can make these kind of quadcopter tilt rotor things. I'm mainly going to focus on Lua, but I'll show you some more rudimentary ways that we can get one flying. So yeah, let's get into it. So before we even get into how to make one of these things, we gotta ask ourselves why would you make one of these things? Well, a traditional helicopter in From the Depths has a pretty glaring weak point, and that's its main rotor. If you shoot that main rotor off, the thing is going down. There's no shot that it's stayed in the air unless it has wings and custom jets. Of course, you can prevent this in a myriad of ways, but that's their main weakness is they rely on a big singular rotor. And in From the Depths, getting a helicopter to fly, like a traditional real-life helicopter, is really difficult. Where it use, it pitches the nose down in order to get the rotor pointing forwards so that the helicopter can move forwards. That's not really easy to do in From the Depths. It could take a lot of like breadboard or Lua work to get it done, but I wouldn't want to do it. Instead, we can just make the rotors themselves tilt while the hole stays pretty stagnant. So this is nothing special, this is just a basic little tilt rotor hole, just long enough to look okay with some space for electric engines and space to stick on some rotors. Of course, you can do this with custom jets, real jets, ion thrusters, anything. I'm using rotors just because, well, I'm calling this a tilt rotor video, so it would be pretty wrong if I didn't use propellers. <laughs> but yeah. So there's kind of a myriad of ways you can do this. You can do this with spin blocks and their propulsion response, which is the main way we're going to show off. You can do this with ACBs, which is a bit more annoying to deal with. You can do it with breadboards, but I don't understand breadboards, so we're not touching those. Or you can do this with Lua, which makes your life super, super easy if you could take a couple seconds to learn how to code. So let's start off with a spin block example. So this here is an iteration of my quadcopter that entirely relies on the rotors to just keep the thing in the air. They don't tilt forwards, they don't tilt backwards, they don't yaw the craft, they don't do anything. They just go up. All of your forward thrust is instead provided by CG. So this is basically just a normal from the depths helicopter with rotors on the side. So why would you make this instead of a normal helicopter? Well, the same reason we said before, this has four rotors instead of one. You could probably get a more efficient, you could probably get more redundancy this, that, and the other, you name it. It's kind of just a plane that has rotors on the side. Nothing special. So why is this better? Well, you can maybe get this to be more stable, any number of things, but this really just serves as a good base for us to work forwards to the spin block example. So, this here's our spin block example. This one's pretty easy to make, and I'll kind of show you through of how to make this. So in order to make one of these things, first of all, just build yourself a hole, make it have four rotors or as many as you want. You can do this with two, three, four, five, whatever. Build something like this, and then we gotta set up spin blocks. So the most important thing here is that you get the spin block pointing the correct way when you hear forwards, and in this case main, because I'm controlling this manually. So this is the most important thing. This is something I'll talk about later. So this can be done by opening up your spin block, going to angle control, going here, and setting it to whatever gets the spin block pointed forwards. In this case, the spin block is reversed from this side because I just copy pasted these things. So this one is set to negative 0.5. This side is set to 0.5. So obviously a spin block can only rotate 360 degrees. So the, your maximum turn is a 180 to one side. And in this case, we're using half, so it's 90. So this points it directly forwards, like that. So this is how you get a quadcopter that flies on its own power with no CGEs required. This is just using electric power. Advantage of this is, well, you don't need to cram CGEs in anywhere. Which is really good if you're trying to save space on something like this. Because these make really good gunships because they're very stable and you can make them pretty big. So no CGEs means you don't need as much power. 
and you're not wasting power compared to where's this guy compared to this guy who has a power demand for these but all they do is keep it in the air it's just wasteful it doesn't really do anything its main source of power is a CGE anyway another thing you want to do is if you want this thing to go up while it's going forwards well we have to tilt the thing up so here's a common mistake that you might get is well let's go to the side that's not reversed so you might have to force your spin block to listen for down instead of up and make sure it's reversible because you'll see what happens if I point this up instead well that's the wrong way right So, you, this thing can't go up without um, being moving forwards, but we'll fix that with Lua later. So, let's get it going forwards. You see here? Points up. That's because the way spin block angles work is they're additive. So, when this sets it to 90 when we're going forwards, if you add 45 to this spin block's angle, so we'll set it to up, you add 45. This thing's going down. That means in this thing's case, it's rolling all over the place. So, make sure that your spin blocks are additive to the angle you want to reach. In this case, we have to take 45 off 90 to get to 45. So, we go up. We can also go down. And if you're using propellers, be careful. These things are also finicky. You will have to play around with getting them in the right, uh, with the right propulsion responses. Using jets or something else makes it pretty easy, but propellers can reverse, which makes this a real, real big hassle. So yeah, just keep in mind, if you're going to do this this way, that you have to keep additive angles in mind regarding your spin blocks. So, what's a dis why would we want to use Lua instead of this? This is so easy. Well, as you can see here, I have to have custom jets to yaw. I can't control yaw any other way. I can't control roll using these. I can't control pitch using these. I can't do anything. They just go forwards. I don't think I can reverse. Yeah, as you can see, these things cannot reverse. It just goes forwards. You could probably set it up, but it's not something I'm willing to try and do. And this is just so finicky, but it's super easy, super simple. You can see this thing's yawing. That's just because clearance on propellers is really weird. So it's just kind of perpetually changing and pointing this thing in the wrong direction. But yeah, super simple, but if you want to do anything other than go forwards, well, you're going to need more. If your craft only goes forwards, you're making kind of like an aircraft, then this is okay. This is fine. You just fill your thing with little uh, jets to control your yaw, your pitch, your roll. This thing has P uh, PID so that it doesn't roll or pitch anywhere. But yeah, this will get you done if that's all you want to do. Now, if you want this thing to say, point at an enemy and be able to reverse and stay a certain distance from your enemy, well, you're not going to get that with normal spin blocks. So for that, we're going to need Lua. This craft is entirely Lua based. There is no control on the spin blocks or the propellers whatsoever. So as we can see here, nothing. Here, nothing. And you can see, it can go up, can go down, could even reverse. Can reverse and go up, and can reverse and go down. You have to ignore all the wobbling because, again, propeller clearance is really weird. Leads to very interesting results. We still need to use um, these jets here for stabilization. Because on a craft this small, as you're going to see in the final example, Creating stabilization is really, really difficult. So it's best to just suck it up and use some jets and some engine power to get this thing stabilized. So, how did we do it? How did we code it? Let's get into it. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to wrestle, wrestle control away from the, the system with complex controls. So this is in your propulsion control. And just for simplicity's sake, K is always positive, H is always negative. You can choose whatever you want. 
and O is negative for the left side, L is positive for, for the left side, and then O is positive for the right side, and L is negative for the, for the right side. This doesn't matter in this example, but it will matter in the example that has stabilization, because this does allow the craft to use different propulsion sets more easily. You could probably not do it this way. I did it this way. If you have issues with that, do it yourself. Just set some complex complex controls. All right. So how do we get this thing to work? This is going to be the long way of how to do it. If you just want the code, you just want an overview of how this works. I'm going to put a timestamp on this video. Skip to that, get it, and I'll probably have the code in a paste bin in the description or something like that. This is going to be the long form. If you're here. You're going to learn the way I did it and maybe how you can do it too. So, if you know nothing about Lua and From the Depths, first things first, everything that happens happens in update. So, I'm just going to hello world in case you don't know how to do this. Hello YouTube. Boom. Step one, you've coded Lua. Now, now you can say you're a software developer just like me. So. The first thing, first piece of information we need is what are our spin blocks? How can we get them? Well, if you don't know how From the Depths works, you might not be able to answer this question immediately. So, let's take a look and help. This is your best friend in this game. You don't need to know Lua if you can use this button. Because you will figure the rest out by Googling. So, spin blocks. We see here, we want to set the spin block rotation angle. But we have this wacky little thing here, the subconstruct identifier. So the subconstruct identifier is the number of your spin block. It's its ID, it's what it refers to it. So we need to get this number somehow. Well, how do we find this? Let's go to subconstructs. The easiest way to do this is to understand that subconstructs are held in an array. An array is just a list that starts at zero and counts up of however many subconstructs you have. In this case, I have four. So that means we have an array of length four with items zero, one, two, three. But the subcontract IDs cannot be zero. So we really have one, two, three, four. I don't know if these are one, two, three, four. They're in some order. It's probably based off which one you place first. So if you don't place your sub uh, um, your spin blocks first these could be any ID if you have turrets on your ship that you add first then your spin block might be ID 2 instead of 1 when you place it so that's something you need to find out so how do we do that well we can do get subconstruct identifier index if you don't know how many subconstructs you have then you can just do this and so we see we have 4 here so we now have an array of size 4 that goes from 0 to 3 because arrays always start at 0 that's just how indices work if you want to learn more Google can help you I'm a software developer I'm not a teacher <laughs> so we have 4 so we need we can iterate through this the easy, the easy way with a loop and find out which uh, which subcontract is a spin block using is spin block and then we can save that or we can just do it the hard way and the hard code is spin block for every subcontract we have. This that's if you have a big ship. If you only have four spin blocks, your spin blocks are ID one, two, three, four. So to make this easier for coding, we're gonna set each spin block. This is just S for spin, B for block, one for its ID, equal to what its ID is. Now you don't have to do this, you can just have the numbers floating around, but I don't like having floating numbers. I like having things that have meaning. That's how you should always declare your variables, is things that have meaning. So we want to get these spin blocks pointing forwards. Alright. So we see here spin block rotation angle. Also you can left click the copy paste. Just do that. So let's set all of them to 90. I'm going to control C, control V. After I do this part, spin block one, set them to 90.
and then change all of these to be your proper variables. Oh no, some of them are reversed. That's because your spin blocks are reversed. Make sure you play around with this and how you set up your spin blocks and evaluate this before you do anything else. So these are, because I've coded this for, these are three and four. So I know already that I just have to set three and four. Oop, not that, but whatever. There's no control Z in here. I just have to set three and four to negative. Or I don't. What? That's oh, because I didn't. I didn't apply it, and they didn't return to zero. Ah, we're getting an error. I for, I accidentally removed my end. That's impressive. I don't code in Lua in my day job, so I don't know how, how this works half the time. Anyway, there we go. Now they're all pointed fours. If I was to turn this thing on right now, well, if I didn't have everything complex controlled this would just work but everything is controlled by complex controllers if you just set these to uh, drive positive your ship will go forwards but we need to go we need to go up somehow and also we want these things to be neutral when we're not moving so how do we do that well we need to listen for a, pro a propulsion request propulsion requests in from the depths can be learned about propulsion tab Propulsion request is just anything, whether it's the AI or the player, saying move forwards or move backwards. You can see they are sent through to an axis, in this case, or a, a type, I guess they'd call it. In this type, we're looking for type 0, because type 0 is main, which is what we want. We want to see, are we moving forwards or are we not moving forwards? So we're going to get propulsion request type from 0 main. So, I'm going to say this. So, we have this. What can we do with this? Well, we can just write an if statement that says, if our main drive is moving forwards, then, oh, don't press tab. That's a bad habit. Then, then we want to set these to move forwards. Control X, Control V. I wish you could press tab in this editor. It would make my life so much easier. Else, so if there's nothing else happening, then we should just set these back to neutral. So, see here they've gone back to neutral set the main drive forwards and they go forwards pretty simple right now because I'm probably gonna end up well I will end up using this more often I'm gonna make these into functions functions are pretty simple updates a function so you can just kinda copy the way they made updates function so this will be called what did I call it this will be called spin box forward spin box forward instance i end so to get this we're just going to control x and control v this also makes your code way more legible because you can say well if this is forwards then i just want to spin blocks forward that's all i want to do it makes more sense to the the human brain rather than just numbers. Do the same with spin box neutral. Call it newt because I like making code short. Control X, Control V. Four spaces because that's what a tab is. And make sure you end your functions. Apply changes, and it should still work. Goes forwards. Oh, I never called neutral. Whoops. Else split spin blocks newt. So, now we have it going forwards, backwards. Naturally, if we want to go up while we're not moving, we just send a request to go up, which we're going to code later. So we don't need to move our spin blocks anywhere. But, if we want to go up 
and forwards at the same time, these things need to be at a 45 degree angle so that we can get our thrust moving in this direction. Because that'll pull us up and forwards. You know, basic math. So how do we do that? Well, if we know that we want to go forwards, and we also know that we want to go up, then we can set our spin blocks to a 45 degree angle. So how do we check for that? Well, I'm just going to use nested if statements. Um, and I don't know if Lua has any sort of switch or whatever to make this easier, but I'm not going to do that. We need to figure out which propulsion axis is up. Well, it's seven. So we want to say if I dash get propulsion request seven is greater than zero point four. I'm using zero point four just in case. Um, when you're doing it this one forwards, it actually gives us sort of VTOL behavior because the uh, the props will start up and it'll they'll be pointing upwards and then it'll sort of tilt forwards and give you a takeoff. Which I think is cool. You could set it to 0 0.1 to listen for instantaneous, but I'm doing it this way. Do it any way you want. So if your proportion request is this, then so this is a nested if statement. This will only ever execute if we're in this. So this will never execute if we're going backwards or if we have, we're not moving at all. So that means this is kind of a if and then if. So we can just do the same thing. I'm just going to copy and paste some functions because it's kind of the same stuff. Spin blocks up forward. And spin blocks up forward. So in order to get your spin blocks up and forwards, you just set them to 45. Pretty simple. Makes sense. Ah, because I made it 70. Whoops. Coding's a process. Turns out, I had a spelling error. Very cool. Check your code kits or use an IDE. Okay, I'm pretty dumb. Yep. Yep. Make sure that you have your else clauses so that you can just 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 do it this way. Basically, I had up forwards checking. But it always set it to spin box forward because I didn't have an else here. So now we should work. So there we go. If we have a forward request and an up request, we're going to 45. This will allow us to kind of pull the craft forwards. Okay, so we're going to get this craft to move now. We're going to fix reverse in a second, which is the main issue with our previous craft. But first, let's get it moving. That way we can start working with a reverse. So, since this craft is wired up to be complex controls, we need to use request complex controller stimulus. All this does is trigger whatever your complex control is. So, since my craft is set forwards to K, which is eight, and reverse to four, which is H, we'll be using eight and four. So, to make these more legible, we'll say forward is eight, reverse is 4. So so if our proportion request is forwards then well we always want to go forwards. So we want to request a complex controller stimulus forward. Right. So since we're always going forward in this block we should go forwards. So here you can see our craft is now moving. So this is most of your functionality. You could just leave it here if you only ever want your craft to go forwards and never stop going forwards. In fact, uh, to make this thing not lose altitude so fast, we'll do a, a minor change. We'll just change these to 87 because 87 points slightly upwards, which will allow us to never lose altitude too fast. So. This is it. You could be done here. You could be happy, done, well off. You could copy that code and call it a day. But if you want to make this worth your while, because you could do this with spin blocks in half the time I just told you how to do it. 
So if you want to make this worth your while and be able to control more complex behaviors, then let's get those done. So reverse, how do we set that up? So reverse is going to be much like forwards. So we'll in fact use the same thing. We'll use a new, a new keyword called else if then. So what's our clause here? Well, our clause is we were proposing requesting backwards. So zero, which is main, less than zero, four. Of course, negative is negative. That's how the game works. And you want to be less than because you're looking for less than a negative value because your maximum value is negative one. So if you're negative, all we have to do to reverse this is to take this, this same complex controller call, and tell it to act on the reverse, which is 4, or H, which is what I wired it to. And we can roughly use the exact same code from here to get this thing to fly in reverse. So, so if I dot get propulsion. So in this case, we'll just say spin blocks forward I yep, I'm just going to check this and make sure it's all correct. Yep. So this should reverse us. It'll look a little funky, but we'll fly in reverse. So here we go. We're going forwards, going backwards, and my propeller is set up the wrong way. That's awesome. Oh no, my prop propellers are fine. This thing is just really stupid because again, propellers are clearance and clearance is bad. So, as you can see here, it flies in reverse just fine. Well, we don't have up behavior or down behavior. As you can see, I'm pressing that. So let's add up behavior to this. However, there's a trick. Let's see. I'm reading off notes. If we want to go backwards when we're in reverse, because these propellers are firing the other way, we actually need to point these spin blocks down. So we also notice something wrong here. We can't go down if we're going forwards. Pressing the button, nothing happens. We can go up. So let's code down. Down is largely the same as up, it's just different angles. So do function. In fact, we'll just copy paste it. So spin blocks down and forwards is just you set it to 135 because 90 plus 45 is 135, which is negative 45 from the degree of forwards or the plane of forwards, whatever you want to call it. And then we can also we can set it up in here to listen for that. So else if I get propulsion request. And remember, 7 is your up and down axis. Right? Right? So, same thing as with the others. 0 0.5, then spin blocks down, forward. <laughs> Apply changes. Set them forwards, and set them down. Oh, propeller clearance. What a time. So, yep, we're decreasing altitude. And then to have this thing fly in reverse, you can just, well, reverse it. So let's go to our reverse clause. Say, so we have spin box forwards here. So this should really be an else, but we'll get to that in a second. So we can actually just copy and paste this entirely. And then just reverse them. Down, up. Apply changes. So, if we fly in reverse for a second, you can see they point down, but that's really up because they're, we're flying in reverse. And if we point down, we go down, but again, they're in reverse. So, this here is most of the functionality that you need to make a quadcopter. If you use this code, which I'll 
scroll through on the screen pretty slowly here. If you use this code, you have just about everything you need. You can code these quadcopters to stabilize and act upon your craft in different ways, which I'll go into in a second. But this is all you need. You just need to wire up your controls correctly and just tell them to act on these basic requests. So here we go. This will be your full code at your timestamp. If you want it, copy it down or look in the description. Of course, this is not the best code, I'm not a Lua expert, but this works. So now, there's a bonus step, which is much, much harder, much more annoying. And I didn't even do all of it, and I'm not going to do all of it because it's that hard. Here we have this little fiery craft, which can do a lot more things. These things can yaw. You could set them up to roll but setting them up to roll is more of a hassle than I was willing to put up with. You can go up, you can go down, and hover. Setting up hover is pretty easy, and I'll go through that in a second. We can go forwards, and we can yaw. As you can see, there's no jets here pushing us left or right. This is entirely through the rotors. The only jets are keeping us stable. So, how do we do that? I'm not going to fully go through this, but I'll give you a rundown. So, here's my full code. It's just been cleaned up a little bit. If we're going forwards, so we're going forwards, then we simply need to tell our propellers, which have that, if you remember, I have the O and the L set up to be inverse for the two sides. Then we just tell our propellers to go right or go left based off these complex controls here. Otherwise, we just go forwards. So this will turn, if we're going right, this will turn the left side propellers to a forward thrust, and the right side propellers to reverse thrust, which will yaw the nose to the right, and likewise for yaw left. So when you're going forwards, that's pretty easy. If you want to set this up for reverse, which I didn't because this was done pretty fast, then you could do the same thing for reverse. It's not that big a deal. And, uh, Here's also your hover. It's uh, here it is. So yeah, this you just have a complex control that acts on positive and negative, which listens for up and down. And uh, where oh where is my angle control? Oh here it is. So this is if we're hovering, and we're not moving at all, and we want to turn left or right, then well. We need these two things to be working on opposite angles. So if you remember, mine are set up reverse. So if I want them to be opposite angles, then I simply just turn them all to 90. And that gets me facing two different ways. And then I set the, the complex controls to forward thrust, which will turn me to the left or turn me to the right, respectively. Pretty simple, but this took uh, longer than I wanted to work on. So yeah. If you want to make quad co quadcopters using Lua, it's pretty simple. It takes some time, but it's a very fun process to learn. And you can scale this up so well. You can add more spin blocks, make a bigger craft, make it more stable, not use propellers, which will probably save you so much headache. Just use CG CJs. It, this thing would be so much easier if it just used jets. But yeah, Lua is pretty awesome. I want to learn more of it. This is like the first craft I ever made that was controlled by Lua, and I think it was a pretty fun build. I'll probably even use this to build a sort of an APS gunship that, you know, is just an upscaled version of this thing. So yeah, if you like this, you want more tutorials, more videos, whatever, like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine yards, and just let me know. I'll see y'all next time.